continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If you're glad to be here this morning, come on. Will you give God some glory? Will you give God honor? Will you give God praise? We came to magnify his name. We came to glorify him. We came to worship him. Let everything that has breath give God some praise. He's worthy. He's worthy of all, of all the praise. Let's just look to heaven, eternal and gracious God, our Father. God, we come thanking you for this another day where you've come, God, to just bring us into your presence that we may feast from your holy and divine table. So God, bless us in a special way. Father, go with us, stand by us in this service. Allow us to lay aside every weight and every measure that we may be able to give you the praise that you so rightly, justly deserve. But go with us, stand by us, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise uh, as we prepare now for our worship. Shabbat is going to come and bless us this morning. Receive her as she comes. Good morning, First Baptist. Did anybody come to praise the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah. How good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. This song simply says, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. How many of you want to see the Lord? See the Lord in everything. Hallelujah. There's so many things going on in the world right now, but God, we fix our eyes upon you. We want to see you, God. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see you. Can you lift that up? Can you help me sing that? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, let's be one big quiet. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on, let's lift that up to heaven. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Come on, let's bring it. I want to see you. Let's sing that one more time. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Yes, God, open our eyes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see you. Sing, open the eyes. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Is that your request on today? I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Yes, God. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out power in love as we sing holy 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 to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power in love as we sing holy 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 let's go to the top open the eyes open the eyes of my Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see you. Let's sing it. Let's bring it up. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see Your glory, pour out your power. 
power in love as we sing holy 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 as we sing holy 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 as we sing holy 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 god you're holy 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 god you're righteous holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you in my home i want to see you on my job i want to see you in my schools i want to see you in my church i want to see I want to see you. I want to see you. Is that your request? Oh, yeah. We want to see you, God. And if you be lifted up, oh, yeah. you will draw all men unto you. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift them up. Thank you, Chevette. Thank you for leading us this morning. We give honor to God, the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To all of you that are here this morning, we greet you in the name of Jesus. We are grateful for this, another blessed opportunity that we have to be in worship once more and again. And let me say, to all of our guests and visitors, those of you who are visiting us here at First Baptist South Hill for the first time, or if you are returning guests, we are grateful for your presence with us this morning. We hope that you'll stay with us. It is as valued and cherished as you as we are valued and valued value and cherish you and having you in our midst. We're delighted to have you and we trust and we pray that when you leave us today that you'll be able to say, I was glad that I stopped by First Baptist Church South Hill. Come on, give God the praise for our visitors and our guests. We are grateful this morning to have some dignitaries in, 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 with us, members of the community, members who love the community, who represent the community, who advocate on behalf of the, of the community first. We have Senator Louise Lucas, who's with us this morning. Let's give God the praise for her. Dr. Ella Ward is with us this morning. Let's give God the praise for her. 
And so, and so we're grateful, we're grateful to God. Here at First Baptist South Hill, we're always, we are always, we want our, we want our members to be, to be informed. Whenever there's an election coming forth, we want them to be informed as to who is running, who they represent, what they represent, so that you can make good and objective and fair judgments in your choices and your decisions. And so we always invite uh, all candidates to come to First Baptist South Hill so that they can get in front of you, so that you can lay eyes on them, on them. So it gives me a great pleasure pleasure to ask to come on up. So Senator Lucas, come on up and take us some minutes and just introduce you. We don't, well, she doesn't have to introduce herself. We all, we all know who she is. Let's give her a hand as she comes. God bless you. Delighted to have you with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to you, Dr. Tolliver. I really appreciate being here. And you're talking about getting up this morning, being excited about coming here. I went to Northern Virginia yesterday to kick off the campaign for the House of Delegates for my granddaughter, who's also named Louise, and my daughter, who's on city council, vice mayor, is named Louise. We about to have three Louise elected officials in the Commonwealth of Virginia, y'all. Well, look, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited this morning. For those of you who saw my commercial with me, the boxing gloves on, you all know ever since I was at the Norfolk Navy Shipyard, that's what I do, I fight. I fight, I fight, but I get up every morning with a heart to fight for my people, my people. Now, I just want to tell you real quickly, because I'm not going to trespass on your time very long. This is probably the most critical campaign of my political career, because redistricting put two black legislators in the same district. But as you all know, I have represented the 18th senatorial district since 1992. Senator Spruill came to the Senate in 2016. Let me tell you about that system. Seniority is king in the legislature. I've been there long enough now where I am tied for second place. First place, Senator Sasslaw. Second place, Janet Howell, are both retiring. That makes me the number one senator in all of Virginia. <laughs> now with that, I'm already President Pro Tem, where I preside over the Senate. Anytime the Lieutenant Governor is absent, if God forbid if the Lieutenant Governor and the, and the Governor are absent, guess what? Y'all got me. Now, with this election, what makes this so critical, I feel profound gratitude for the opportunity to serve in the Senate, and people of the 18th Senatorial District have kept me there for 30 years. Now, what that means is I will, for the first time in the history of the Commonwealth, become the first black person to ever be chair of finance and appropriation. That's what matters. I will chair the money committed for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and you all know we have not had that level of influence in Hampton Roads in over 35 years. And it has never been held by a black person. Vote for me, I bring home the money. Come on, let's give God the praise for Senator Louise Lucas. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Listen, one of the things that we, that we, that we cherish in, in our community, a predominantly black African-American community, is that, is that our candidates, our representatives don't have to put on a front when they, when they come to represent us. We want them to be themselves, however they choose to be themselves, because that's who we put in place of, and, uh, and they don't have to be shamed for nobody in front of nobody, around nobody, because they're there, because we put them there. Whether it be Senator Lucas, whether it be Senator Spruill, whoever, Listen, my thing is, it's in the look, it's in the look, and I told Lonnie this, he said not long ago, listen, that, that, that I've got members of this congregation who are on both, sides of the, on both sides of the fence, Democrat and Republicans, they're all in here, and, uh, and I told, I, I, told I, told, I just had to tell my secretary to just tell one of the candidates, I ain't taking no pictures, you ain't going to get a quote from me, I'm telling my members, uh, stay loyal to who you have been loyal to, look at the candidates, look at their record, look at their positioning, check their value and vote according to your conscience. Amen. Let's give our candidates a big hand. Dr. Ward, come on up and say something. Come on. You can't come to First Baptist without saying something, something, something. Come on, give her a hand as she comes. <laughs> Now, you know, I don't need to be up here, but I'm up here all the time. But thank you so very much. And just in case I haven't said it, as I told Herman this morning, I can't go to the mountain this morning. I got to go to Tolliver, and I got to go to First Baptist South Hill. I love all of you. Thank all of you who voted for me last year. So that makes me having run seven times and having won seven times in the city of Chesapeake. Thank you so very much. I love you. 
And yes, I am here with Senator Lucas. She's been riding down. We've been hanging out together and running things for 50 years. And we need to keep her in the Senate. That's all I got to say. We need to keep her in the 18th Senatorial District. Thank you. I can say that. Bishop Tolliver can't, so but I can't. Yeah. Right, thank you. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. <laughs> God, come on, let's give her a big hand. God bless you. God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Lucas. Thank you, Dr. Ward, for being with us this morning so that our, so that our members can associate a name with a face and we'll come on give them another big hand all righty let's have a few announcements we're going to move right along with our worship first of all i want to say this morning uh, that i want to thank all of the members you are still coming you're still contributing to paying off the parking lot one hundred thousand dollars we have raised ninety two thousand one hundred and eleven dollars we thank god for that now, that's what we came in with. But this morning, one of the members came to me and gave me a check for $3,000. So that raises that up to 95. So Tolliver and I have already given 1,000, but we're going to give another 500. So we're asking you, let's, let's finish this thing off in this a church of this size. Uh, we're only $5,000 away. We can have that by next Sunday. So next Sunday, when I come in, I want to be able to announce that we have raised $100,000 and that parking lot is going to be paid off. Amen. <laughs> All righty. All righty. Let's go. Let's go a little bit further. First of all, I want to say that on this coming Wednesday, we will be having our Bible study in the evening. No noon Bible study. We'll have the evening Bible study and I'll meet you there. Also on Wednesday, on Wednesday at 815, Minister Keisha McDaniel winning Wednesdays uh, with Keisha. That will be at 815 on on Wednesday morning. Uh, want to inform everyone that also the food pantry here at First Baptist South Hill, we have moved to two. We'll move into two Thursdays a month, the second and the third and the fourth Thursdays of, of the month that we will be feeding. And if you've never been by First Baptist South Hill on the day that we do the food pantry, you ought to come and see it. It is a sight to behold. I mean, we've got cars that wrap all the way around from this building around that large parking lot all the way out to the street. We serve, when we have those days, of more than three and 400 families and households that we serve. Let's give God the praise for making a difference into the community. And also, the Pastoral Select Committee would like to thank everyone for, for taking the survey. And uh, the, today is the deadline for taking the survey. That's for the Pastoral Search and Select Committee. Thank you for taking that survey. And, and those of you who are here, if you've not taken it online and you have problem with online the devices, go to the back in the fellowship hall after the worship service, and they will give you, and they will assist you with that. Also, the Couples Ministry would like to meet everyone on Friday the 19th, on Friday the 19th at 7 p.m. And please mark your calendar that it's going to be on Friday the 19th. Now, I want to remind all of the students, those of you who are graduating from high school, uh, that the scholarship applications for, for you to get the First Baptist South Hill Scholarship, uh, those scholarships, that application is due uh, by May the 28th. Okay, you're a high school senior, you're going to college, you got to learn how to meet deadlines. Uh, everybody who applies will get something. Everybody who applies will get something. So let's give a big hand for those college students. And by by the way, Norfolk State, y'all graduated yesterday. Any Norfolk State graduates up in here? Any Regent University graduates in here? Any Old Dominion University graduates in here? North Carolina, all the HBCU. Uh, if you graduated, are you up in here? <laughs> Let's give them a big hand. Let's give them a big hand. All righty, all righty. We're ready. And, so, and again, we, now that we're moving back into regular worship, uh, we invite anyone to come along and be a part of the, the ministries that you can just volunteer for and, uh, and give service to our church and its ministry, security ministry, greeters ministry, and uh, the media ministry, the food service ministry, as well as the usher ministry. We have a new usher serving for the first time this morning. So this is Jenna Miller. That's, there she is back there. I see you, Jenna. God bless you. Let's give her a big hand. All righty. On this coming Thursday, we will be with the Reed family. The brother, Alan Reed, deceased to his homegoing service, will be here on this coming Thursday at 1 o'clock. So we're certainly going to be here uh, to just give support uh, to the Reed family in that homegoing celebration. So at this time, the children's ministry on behalf of Vacation Bible School is going to come. Uh, brother Ray Carlson, uh, Coach Ray, is going to come and chat with us this morning. Come on, Coach Ray, and present to the congregation. Let's give him a big hand as he come on behalf of the youth and children's ministry good morning everybody morning. all right got a brief announcement about vacation bible school but we'll get into that after we view this video
Before VBS, I was a chef at a fancy restaurant just down the street. Retired. I'm a mom to two beautiful girls and a dance coach. Before VBS, I taught middle school gym. I lead a small group for teenagers. Who would have known that it would all lead to this? <laughs> oh yeah. I let my granddaughters dress me up. But that's why I was so ready to get dressed up for the skits. I get to create masterful, theme-inspired dishes for snack time. Outdoor activities, they're my jam. That's why I love leading games. I love to dance. I dance at the coffee shop. I even dance when I'm watering my plants. That's why I jumped at this opportunity. High fives are essential for crew leaders. That's why I've been working hard on the High Fiverator 2.0. The reward? It's the kids. Hands down. They inspire me. The kids' bright, shining faces. When the kids are happy, I'm happy. Making sure they have fun makes it all worthwhile. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. You have what it takes. Will you step up? of our gener the next generation is the future, right? Oh, yeah. With that being said, in order for them to achieve their level of greatness, we got to pour into them. And in order for us to pour into them, we got to sacrifice a little bit of us to give a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to help them achieve what they're trying to get to in their lives. So with that being said, we are definitely looking for volunteers for this year's Vacation Bible School, which is going to be the week of July 10th through the 14th. From 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I know it's a long, I, listen. But listen, we, gonna, we love these kids and we're going to do what we're going to put our best foot forward for these young people, okay? All right, so we're looking for volunteers in the areas. We need Bible teachers. We need teach, uh, classroom assistants, bathroom runners. We need a nurse. We need floaters, which somebody to help people take breaks and just, you know, go from room to room and get what they need. Uh, cafeteria staff, and the most important that I... I understand from working in the school for so long is parent drop off and parent pick up. So we need staff for those lines because we know how those lines can get backed up and parents be ready to go. So we're going to need volunteers for all these areas during vacation Bible school. And I understand it's just a little bit of time, take a little bit of effort. I know it's summertime and some people have vacation things they want to do, but just give a little bit of energy, a little bit, a couple hours a week. We'd love to have you. We're looking for all volunteers starting from ages 12 up to retirement. So, like, just anybody that's willing to bring the positive energy, anybody willing to show love to these kids for that week, greatly appreciate it. And like Brother Tyler said, I am Coach Ray. I work with our youth here, and I'm going to give 120% to them any and every day that I'm here. So we really appreciate anybody that volunteers. Thank you. Coach Ray, come on, let's give God the praise for him. I, too, want to encourage anyone who just will take a day, a day or two uh, out uh, doing Vacation Bible School to be a, just, it, it, I mean, it's a blessing to these children. We've got to invest more and more and more in the lives of our children, amen? Not just dishing money out to them or praying for them. We got to get beside them and connect with them and be in, you just be with them. So let's just give a hand to you who's going to volunteer. We praise God for you. All right, that is it for all of our announcements. We ask that you would take due note and govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, let's prepare now for just giving God the praise, honor, and glory for the offerings. Uh, we believe at First Baptist South Hill that all good and perfect gifts, they do come from the Lord. And I want to thank all of our members that as we don't pass the collection plate anymore, we give through push pay or we give through, or we give through uh, the box as you come in in the morning. Thank you for just being, with, just, just complying with that we, and, uh, and just continuing to give in those means 
that we give. Let's look to God as we give God thanks for our offerings. God, we come now in obedience to your word. We've given back to you that which you have given unto us. We believe this morning, Lord, that all good and perfect gifts, they do come from you. So receive now our tithe, our gift, and our offering. And if we have fallen short, forgive us now and help us to realize that we shall be blessed only as we bless you. Bless this that we give and your kingdom will be blessed. Then, Father, bless that that remains that your need will be met. For it's in Jesus' name uh, that we give and we cheerfully give. Amen and amen. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Let's give God a great big round of applause. As we've gladly given back to God. The, today is Communion Sunday, so if you have not yet gotten your communion cup, we're going to be, be, be preparing for the communion immediately following uh, the morning worship service. If you have not gotten the communion cup, just let one of the ushers know. And at that time, they'll make sure that you have a communion cup so that you can, uh, with us, partake of the communion. At this time, Sister Chevette is going to come. Is that Chevette is going to come? Let's give her a big hand, one of the angelic voices that we have here, and be a blessing to us this morning morning. Let's give her a bigger hand even as she comes. All righty. Hallelujah. We honor the presence of the Lord that's in this place. Do I have any worshipers in the house? Do I have anybody that's thankful to God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the world bow down and say So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, feel this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. Anybody feeling that?
Worship him right here oh, just for name, a God. moment. Hallelujah. If you came in here with anxiety or depression, Hallelujah. his presence is here to heal you. Hallelujah. If you came in here with a need, hallelujah, his presence is here to refresh oh, yes. you. to be with you, God. Know you're with us, feeling your presence, knowing that you're standing by us, that you're watching over us, that you care for us. King of glory, just want to be with you. Come on, give God some praise for our worship selection this morning. All righty. 
Listen, a few more things before we before we get started. We, we we fail to recognize this is the beginning of the month. It's the first day of the first the first Sunday of the month, and so there's going to be some birthdays in the month of in this month of May. And so if you've got a birthday in the month of May, will you stand so that we can recognize you, Jackie? All right, I see you. I I, I see you. I see all of y'all out there, Tim. I I, I see. You. I'm gonna I'm start calling names now. I see you, Gloria. I I, I see y'all. Listen, listen. Let's give them a big hand. May this be a wonderful month for your birthday. May God has blessed you to see another year. And may God just give you a wonderful spirit of celebration in this month. All of those individuals who are celebrating wedding anniversaries in the month of May, will you stand that we might recognize you this month? All of our wedding anniversary folk. I see you up in the balcony there. Yeah, Kim, I see you. All righty. Wedding. I see you there. All right. Let's give them, let's give them a big hand. May God continue to just bless you. May he continue continue to walk in just pre pre and, and marital bliss and, bliss and post-nuptial ecstasy. May you continue to just be blessed by the Lord. All righty. We thank God for this day. It's a wonderful, glorious day that the Lord has made and all of us have reason to rejoice and to be glad in it. Let's get ready. Let's get ready for the word. Uh, we're going to do we begin a series, a four-part series, uh, well, a three-part series, but a fourth, the fourth sermon is going to be the introduction of the series today. And I want to read the scripture that's going to be associated with that scripture. It'll, you'll find it uh, inside of you on your device. It'll be displayed momentarily. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verse 12. Let us all stand as we give reverence to the word of God. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, just one text, verse 12. And it reads as so, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am fully known. Let me read that again. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am fully known. We ask that God would add a blessing upon the reading of his holy word and sanctify these precious truths in the very depths and midst of our hearts that by the reading of God's word, the application of the same will have that which we need to help us as we run uh, this Christian race. As I said, we want to start a series, a series this, 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 uh, this Sunday. And I want to entitle that series, uh, I See You, God. I See You, God. Now, now that can be said in different ways. I see you, God. But, but, but if you notice that when I was greeting certain folk and I was talking up when I was calling certain folk up for their birthdays, anniversaries, yeah, yeah, I, I did it this way. I see you, yeah, yo, I see you over there. I see you over there. I see you over there. Which is a common slang that we use in our day and time because, and a, a way of phrasing that we see someone because we want to make them aware that we are aware of their presence, that we are aware of their personhood, that we are aware that we in some way may even value them. I see you. I see you. And so today I want to, to speak briefly from, uh, from, from that, that theme that's going to be the backdrop of the series that we're going to do, I See You, God. Why, Reverend Tolliver? It's because we're living at a time when there is so much going on, when there is so much people are dealing with, when there's so much crap and mess and stuff that, that is going on in the world today. That we have to ask ourselves, and, and sometimes people do ask, is God in this mess? Is God, is God in this? Is God a part of this? Is God, is God aware, aware of this? And, and oftentimes, life will bring us to a point when we're dealing with frustrations, disappointments, and, and, just, and just anger or whatever, that we ask ourselves a question, is God, is God aware? Is God in this? And, and there are some times that, that we must admit that when we're going through what we go through in life, that we are dealing with issues that we, we because of the emotion that we're dealing with and the stuff that we have to put up with, we don't see God nowhere in it. The text that we read today is a backdrop of where we're going to go for the next four Sundays. Because it says that we hear the Apostle Paul talking to the Roman church. He says, but now I see through a glass darkly. There's just some times that you just don't see it. 
you, 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 you got your lenses on, but, but you can't see because there is obstruction. You can't see because there, there's that that impedes your, your vision that you can't see because, because there's something between you and that that you're trying to see that won't let you see. And, and Paul phrased it in this way, I see through a glass darkly. But then Paul says, but then face to face, I know in part. And I want to use that because, because I, want us to, I want us to begin to frame to, as we approach life and as we continue to journey through life, that, that there is no end to the chaos, the conflict, and the confusion. There's no end to the ridiculous. There's no end to the crazy, to the meanness, the malice. And there's no end. That we, and it's unfortunate that, that no end. We're still hearing of folks getting killed in malls and shopping malls. We're still hearing about children being shot in schools. We're still hearing of young folk committing suicide. We're still hearing of all this stuff. And we ask ourselves, is God in this? For the next several Sundays, I want to help us to begin to see God in it. And, uh, and we're just going to lay the groundwork today. But the next Sunday, next Sunday we'll be talking about seeing God with our, by, by, by employing hindsight. And then the next Sunday, foresight. And then the next Sunday after that, insight. But let's go today. Today I want to take us to a scripture. And it won't be displayed. Take your seats. I just want to read the scripture. And it reads like this. In Mark 8, verse 22 through 25, it says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring him a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Okay. And when he had spit in on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him he's, uh, if he saw aught. In other words, and let me paraphrase it. He asked him, what do you see? Verse 24 says, and he looked up and said, I see men walking as trees. Verse 25 says, and after he put his hands again on his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored, and he saw everything clearly. So in the backdrop of this series that we are doing, that of I see you, God, I want to talk today from the thought, I can see clearly now. I can see clearly. I can see clearly now. You know, there are, there are times that when, we, when, we, when we're going through life and we're dealing with stuff, that there are those things that block our visions. And I said it earlier, that distort our vision, that impede our vision. Anybody who knows me, who's been around me long enough, know that one of the great fascinations I have in life is the fascination for flying. I love flying. I love getting on planes. I, 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 I just love just, just, just the feel of, of airplanes. Turbulence don't bother me. In fact, bring it on. I, I don't like, I don't like smooth flights. I want to feel the bumps in the road. If I, if I can permit, I didn't ask him for his permission to use his name, but I'm going to use his name anyway. My good friend, my brother, my pastor, Pastor Alio Cromwell, I remember years ago, we, we used to travel together. Our families used to travel together to the, to the Baptist conventions. Anybody know Cromwell? Cromwell don't like flying. Bishop Cromwell doesn't like flying. And we get on a plane, all the preachers, and we, we all on the plane. We get on the plane, and Prophet Cromwell sitting there, so tall of now, we're sitting across from his kids in the back, preachers up front, preachers in the back, and the plane getting ready to take off. I see Cromwell and Deborah holding hands. <laughs> Cromwell ain't saying a word. And, 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 and the plane takes off, and they're still holding hands, and, and then Sister Tolliver, she, and she, and she, she's another one. She, she ain't crazy about after She'll go, because I, I tell her, if you go, I'm going by myself. So she goes. And so, she, so she'll come, and the whole time, when that plane gets ready to take off, she grabs my, my leg. And I'm going to say, Lord, if you don't hurry up and get this plane off the ground so this woman can turn loose my leg, I mean, she squeezed my leg like a vice. We, we get up in the air. We get up in the air and there's some turbulence going on. Cromwell is sitting there and ain't saying a word. You can see sweat building up on it. I'm sitting there laughing. Oh, this is flying up in here. This is flying. I said, Doc. I said, Doc, what you worried about, man? Don't, the, the word, I mean, we preach this. The word of God says, the God says, I'm with you always, even until the, we're in the, God, I said, I'm always with you. Cromwell looked at me and said, read that scripture again, Tolliver. The Lord says, lo, I'm with you all the way. He ain't saying nothing about being up here. I, I think we're all in a different place now. We fly, we go, we don't mind going. But, 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 that's it. But, but, but I love flying. 
and I've always loved flying, but Ely, but and and but 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 in the earlier years, uh, flying did make me uncomfortable. For my first time on an airplane was when I was 21 years old, leaving Norfolk, going to Marine Corps boot camp. First time I'd ever been on a plane in my life. Those first two few, few experiences with deacons on an airplane scared me to death. Ain't never been on a plane before. Plane takes off. It's a prop plane taking it to South Carolina down into the Marine Corps boot camp. Plane takes off, and all of a sudden, the plane. Go, well, I can, I'm looking at the ground because I, you know, this is new to me. I'm looking out the window. I'm looking at the ground, and all of a sudden, I don't see nothing. There's nothing but whiteness. I can't see outside the plane, and I'm like, oh Lord, what's going on here now? I, I, I can't see. I can't see because because he's in the clouds now. He's in the clouds now, and, I, and I'm thinking to myself, all kinds of stuff, this man is in this clouds, and something is going to bump into this plane, this plane going down, and I, I'm 21 years old, ain't never been on a plane before, I am I'm about as uncomfortable as uncomfortable can get. And then all of a sudden, after, after, he, that, after we in those clouds about five or ten minutes, we, we come up into the, the clearest blue skies that I ever seen in my life. And, and whereas we were, we were in the clouds, we reached a point where we were, I looked down and I don't see the ground. What I see uh, the, is it just, just looked like cotton going across. We were above the clouds. Put your finger there. I'll be back in a minute. There are times in life that when we are navigating our way through life, that, that we have to deal with the fog of reality. And the fog of reality, oftentimes when it comes in, it, 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 it distorts our vision. We can't see where we're going. We can't see where we're going to, how to get through. Why? Because we're in the fog. Fog, fog can be disorienting. Fog can be confusing. Fog can be puzzling. Fog can be unsettling. And, and all of us have had moments in life when we have to deal with the reality of, of, of that that we cannot see, understand, comprehend. We can't embrace it. We can't grab it. We can't put a handle on it. We can't figure it out because it's puzzling and it unsettles us and it causes us to ask the question sometime is God aware of what's going on and oftentimes depending on the, 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 the degree to which we cannot see that we cannot get that we cannot comprehend we don't understand that somebody might say I can't see God in this I remember telling our deacons and ministers some years ago when I was teaching and t teaching how to take a, make, make hospital visits and home visits. And I says, listen, you're going to be going into environments and you may have to counsel and you may have to be with individuals who will face calamity and tragedy and dealing with difficulties in life. And, and I remember telling them, one scripture I do not want you to use, Romans 8 and 28, all things come together. For the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to their purpose. I said, don't use that scripture. Don't, don't, don't use that scripture. Because, the, and you know, the way we say, they don't necessarily use scripture. But you know how y'all do, how y'all black folk do sometimes when, you, when you're trying to give. You just just be, be nice to somebody. Well, it all works together, baby. <laughs> Hanging is, 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 is working together for your good. Huh? Really? I just lost my child. My loved one just got shot in the mall. That, 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 you know, I, I, I'm trying to deal with embracing losing mama and dad. And you going to tell me that that's working together for my good? And I would tell the leaders, listen, don't use that scripture. Because you, pro you won't use it in the proper context. Because when you read that scripture in the proper context, and, and the Good News Bible says it the right way, not that all things work together for the good, but in all things, God works for your good. Are you with me so far? So, 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 the, so the accident and the calamity and the shooting and the suicide or whatever, no, that's not working together for your good. But here's what God wants you to know is that in the midst of it all, God works together. He'll work through it, in it, and with you for your good. That, and, and, so, and, so, and so here we are, and I'm going to get to the scripture now. Here we are, here, here we are. The blind man comes to Jesus, and they bring, uh, they bring Jesus to the blind man. They bring the blind man to Jesus, and he cannot see. They bring him to Jesus because they've heard that he's a healer, he's a deliverer, he's a may waker, the may, a way maker. He brings him to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? The Bible says that he spits on the ground, and he anoints his eyes with the ointment that he made of spit. And he asks him the question, what do you see? And the man, blind man says, I see men walking as trees. 
And so, so that at least is to what I want to talk about this morning because, because brothers and sisters, there'll be times that, that those of us that are in the community of the committed, those of us that, that are faithful, those of us who pay our tithes and that we support the programs that we love the Lord or whatever, but there'll be times that, that when things will happen in our lives that we cannot see clearly in the midst of it all. Why? Because the fog of life have, have gotten so thick that I don't even want to hear uh, with you with your religious self coming up in here telling me that all things work together for the good. Because I can't see God in this. I can't see him. I can't see him. I can't see him right now because what I see is trees. And I don't have the clarity. I don't have, I, I, I don't have the definition of that that I see. I don't understand this cancer in my body. I don't understand uh, this sickness in, uh, in my family. I don't understand this, fa this, this family being torn apart. I don't understand that my marriage is breaking up. I don't understand this stuff. I don't see God in this. I know it's quiet here. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to be over in a minute. Hang in there. And so God is saying, God is saying to us this morning that, 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 that it is, that, that it is, it is a, a natural human response that even when you're in the community of the committed, even when sometimes you will say that, yeah, and you cherish the fact that you have a relationship with God, but then something happens where you don't see him anymore. God wants you to know that that's, that's, that's natural, that, that, that is expected emotionally when you're going through that. Because there'll be times that God would ask you, what are you seeing? You're saying, God, I just don't see it. I see men walking as trees. I got, I got to cancel my body. God, I got to deal with this sickness. I got to deal with this, this calamity. I got to deal with, with this craziness in our society. I got to deal with the politics and the economy. And I got to deal with my church. I got to deal with my job and all this stuff, God. God, I, I'm just not seeing it right now. And so, and so when we read this story, it says that, that we get we draw from this story something that will help us. And I, we'll get ready to go and get ready for the next Sundays to come. That will help us to begin to understand that, that when we are in that state, that mental, emotional, that state where we cannot see, God is saying that it's only temporary. He asks us sometimes, what do you see? God, I don't understand what I'm going through because that's what seeing is. It's a metaphor for your understanding and your comprehensions. There are times I don't understand why this is happening. I can't comprehend that it's happening. But that's all it is. It's saying that God, that, that God, I know you're God and I know you're able and I know that you can and I know that you will. I know that you're a miracle worker. But right now, Lord, there's this cancer in my body. There's this affliction uh, in our church, in our jobs, in our society. And God, every time Time I go through, I just can't make heads or tail of it. I can't deal with it. I can't see you in the midst of it all. How do I get through, Lord? This man here in the story tells us, and give me about five more First Baptist minutes and we're going home. He shows us how to get through this. He shows us how to get through it. First thing that he does in the text is that they bring him to Jesus. And so the first thing that I want to begin to tell you here is that, listen here, when you're going through and you can't see and you're in the fog of life and you don't know how you're going to make it, how you're going to navigate, begin to seek and maintain an abiding relationship with God. Why is that necessary, Reverend Tolliver? Because when you can't see your way, then somebody got to navigate for you. When you don't know how you're going to make it, somebody Somebody got to lead you by the hands when you don't know how you're going to get through this thing. Ha! Ah, God is saying that, listen to me, I'm right here by your side. You know, the thing about the airplane is this here, is that when pilots, when they, you know, I'm on the plane as it, when I was 21 years old, I'm worried back there sitting uh, in the back seat, but the pilot wasn't worried about anything. Why? Because what he has, he has instruments up there. He's trained that when he gets in the cloud, trust his instruments. He's got an instrument that will keep the plane level. He's got an instrument that will tell him when, when the plane is pitching and when it's yawing. He's got an instrument that will tell him the speed of the plane and how high the airplane is. He can't see a thing, but he trusts his instruments. Why? Because those instruments most of the time will not fail him. Because the reality is he's in the clouds and with all of his experience, without those instruments, he would be doomed. Well, are you with me so far? He couldn't tell if he's up, down, sideways, or upside down. 
without those instruments. Because here is the reality of life. The reality is this. You only, you're in one of three positions. You're in it and you're trying to get through it and you're trying to find your way out of it. Can I tell somebody, because that's what somebody is saying this morning, Reverend, when I came to church this morning, I just wanted to let you know that I'm in the fog of life. I'm in it. I need you to tell me how to get through it so that I can get my way out of it. Is there anybody in here that's in it, trying to get through it so that you can get out of it? Ah, somebody say, Pastor, that's what I would need to hear from you this morning. I need to know that when I can't see and I'm in the fog of life and I realize that I'm in it, I need you to tell me how to get through it so that I can get out of it. And so the first thing I've already told you is that you need to be on the plane and have the right co-pilot in the next seat next to you. And you know the thing I love about the Lord is the Lord says, I'm your co-pilot and every night now and then, he'll put you in the co-pilot seat, and he'll take the controls and let you know that no weapon formed against you is ever going to prosper. He'll let you know that I'm God, who promised never to leave you, nor ever forsake you. I am God, who will make a way for you out of no way. I am God, who will get you through the thick and get you through the thin. I know you're in it. I'm going to get you through it and I'm gonna bring you out of it come back out and give God some glory ah. I, I, I'm God. And so the first is to seek him and maintain a relationship with him. And when I can I work on maintain for a minute, maintain means is that don't give up on the Lord because you're seeing trees. Don't give up on God because it didn't work the first time. Don't give up on God because you're try, you're tired of that radiation. You try tired of that chemo. Don't give up on God because you feel like you can't take it no more. But the way the man got, got his store by sight back, uh, he stuck in there. He hung in there. And if you hang in there long enough, uh, the Lord will ask you, what do you see? He already knows that you ain't complete. He already knows that you're not whole. But number two, you just to rely on him to make a way for you out of no way. Because when the Lord sees that you don't see it right, he'll touch you again and when he touch you again you'll look around and got 2020 over here and 2020 over there and 2020 up there anybody know that God will give you a vision that God will give you understanding that God will give you comprehension that God will make a way for you out of no way somebody ought to give God glory and give God the praise I'm about to close now. Huh. I told you I'd be back to them clouds. You know. <laughs> Listen, the, the best part of the flight is when you come out of the clouds and you get up above the clouds. Because when you're above the clouds, that's the only time that I'm satisfied without a little bit of turbulence. Because why turbulence don't bother me. Every now and then, I just want to relax and know that when I look down on the clouds, that the Lord has brought me through turbulence. The Lord has has brought me through shakiness. The Lord has brought me through unsteadiness. It's in that cloud I can give God glory and give God praise. Lay back and relax and know that everything is going to be all right. Somebody give God glory. Give God praise. One more thing, one more thing. <laughs> but if you get up, you got to come down. <laughs> and every now and then, Brother Sterling, is that when you're up above the clouds and you got to come back down, you got to come back down through the clouds. <laughs> And if you ever been flying at night 
and it's a foggy night, it can get real scary. Because what begin to happen is that you come down, you don't see that in no way, because it's dark out there. The pilot say, I'm going to cut on the lights, buckle your seatbelt. Might be a little bit of turbulence while we're going down. You buckle up. The lights are on. The plane is descending. And you're getting uneasy because you know that ground is coming up. You looking out the window. You don't see nothing. But you know that ground is coming up. I told you I love flying. And, and even the internet know that I love flying. Because, just a little side note, whenever you're on the internet searching stuff, the, the, the internet guy <laughs> is recording everything you search for. <laughs> you don't believe me? When was the last time you brought something on the internet? You go on the internet to read the newspaper, and on the newspaper advertisement is the last thing that you look for. It's because they, they know that you look for it. So when I get up on YouTube, the, what comes up in my YouTube streams is a bunch of flying videos. <laughs> showing me the cockpit and the plane coming in for a landing. But Deacon, this is the one I like. I, I like riding those, those, those ones where he's coming in in the fog. And he's, and, he's, and he's landing the airplane. Truth of the matter is he ain't got his hands on the control at all. The computer is landing the airplane. He, he's, coming, he's coming down. And when he's coming down, it's dark. And, and, and if you watch those videos, and this is what happens in, in, in these modern day planes. There, there's a voice inside the cockpit that lets him know how high he is. When he gets close to the ground that he cannot see, the voice in the cockpit says, 200 feet. 100 feet 75 feet and, and I'm looking at the video so quick when is they gonna show this boy this runway <laughs> when he gets to about sometimes 50 feet all of a sudden you see the plane coming in and the lights come on and the plane is directly in line with those lights that have come on at a hundred feet he could see nothing when he got down to 50 feet, he saw the lights. Can I tell somebody that's the way God is? When it seems like you're going low, and you're going as low as you can go, and you don't think you're going to make it, hold on, hold on, hold on, because the lights go come on. Jesus is the light of the world he ain't gonna let you fall he ain't gonna let you down but he's gonna bring you down and when you get down say lord i see you i see you now you are working for my good give god glory give god honor give god the praise Sometimes, sometimes we're in the fog of darkness. We can't see our way. But never forget that Jesus is the light of the world. He'll light it up for you. He'll give you clarity. He'll give you understanding. He'll give you comprehension. And when he's done it, you know what you're going to say? I see you, God. I see you. I see you. You brought me through. You got me. I see you, God. You got me over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I wouldn't have made it. If it weren't for you, I see you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stand on your feet, if you will. God wants to bring us all to a place and a point where that we've gone through the tree seeing and he touch us again when we hang in there. Don't give up on him. We'll begin to see clearly. I can see clearly now. I couldn't see it back then, Lord, but I stuck with you. I'm hanging in there with you. 
and I know you're going to always light up and make a way for me and get me through the fog of life. So God, I want to just make sure that I'm, I'm in line with you, that I'm connected with you. So today, as we begin to close out, maybe there's somebody who's, who's in the fog of life that you can't see your way. Difficult, you don't understand. Things been going on, things been happening that there's no rhyme and there's no reason to it. And you, you've been having a difficult time seeing God through all of that. God is saying to you, I, I, I need you to know that I've never left you. I need you to know that I'm right here with you and I'm right here for you. And when you're in it, trying to go through it, looking for a way out of it, God is saying, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Leading you. I'm right here. I got my hands on you. I'm right here making a way for you. And even when it seems like you're sinking, you got to know that I'm still at the controls. And I'm not going to let you fall. I'm not going to let you hit the ground. But I want you to see me. And I praise God for, for God being there for so many of us that are here today that we can say, Lord, I, I see you now. I see you, God. My, my circumstances, my predicament didn't allow me to see you when I first got told what I, what I had and what I had to deal with. But I came out of it. And I see you. I see you now, God. Didn't see you then, but I see you now. So God wants you to hang in there. God wants you to hang in. What do you do? When you've done all you can and seems like it's never enough. Oh, what do you say when friends turn away and you're Giving your all, and it seems like you can't make it through. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand, watch the Lord see you through after you've done all. You can, you just stand. No, tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? Oh, how do you smile? when your heart has been broken and filled with pain, filled with pain. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like you can't make it through. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do, you just stand and watch the Lord see you through. After you've done all you can, you just stand. So if there is one, if there is one, if there is one, if there is one. If you want to connect with this God who has promised you that he is the light of the world, that he's the light of life, he's the light of your life. A God who promises never to leave you, but he's right there beside you that you can connect with when you're in the fog of life. 
I invite you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart right now. How do I do that, Pastor Tolliver? That right where you're standing, right where you are, just pray this prayer with me right now. Let's just pray this prayer. All heads bowed, every eye closed. Father, we come now. And I come, God, speaking and advocating on behalf of that one who is at a decision point in their life. They may be unchurched, unsaved, or even uncertain where they are, God. They just know they want to be in a different, different and a better place. So, God, I pray that you would just touch that one right now. And if I can pray a prayer for them, God, right now I pray this prayer that, Father, I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I confess my faults, my failures, my sins to you. And God, I give you my heart, and I want Jesus in my heart. So thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you for salvation, and thank you for making it free. I believe and confess this morning that he died for my sins, and he rose for me. And so, God, when I get out of this prayer, God, I'm going to go and seek a church, to seek a ministry that I'm going to be a part of, whether I'm in person or whether I'm virtual. I'm going to connect with you and become a part of a church fellowship. God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for receiving me. Thank you for my new anointing. Thank you for my joy. What is in Jesus' name, I pray. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise, won't you?